Hey guys, Michael from Copper vs Glass, and today we're going to be looking at how to use your DualShock 4 controller from your PlayStation 4 as a Bluetooth controller for your Android device, and also look at how you can use the remote play feature from the PS4 on a device that doesn't have to be branded by Sony. So, let's take a look. Okay guys, so things that you're going to need to do this is a DualShock 4 controller and as you can see here I've got an awesome red and black combo and you're going to need an Android device and for that I'm going to be using my OnePlus 2. So what you need to do is put the controller into pairing mode by holding the PlayStation and the share button down for a couple of seconds and then what you're going to get is a white strobing light on the light bar on the bottom of the controller as you can see just there. Now the actual controller itself is in pairing mode and it's discoverable by a device, for instance my OnePlus 2. So what you then need to do is go into the settings on your Android device, go into the Bluetooth settings and turn on Bluetooth and then the controller should pop up straight away just as a wireless controller. All you then need to do is click on the wireless controller and then you're pretty much set and ready to go and then the bar on the back of the controller will then be a solid bar instead of flashing and that's how you know that everything's connected and as it should be. Now you can also move some of the controller buttons around and it will do certain things on your Android device as you can see here from going up and down in the menus but it's quite limited as what you can do on the home screen it's more for actually in game or using the remote play feature which we're going to be looking at now. Now a lot of games are supported with Bluetooth controllers on Android which is a really easy way to play games. Something like Asphalt 8 as you can see here is really enjoyable with a controller. Now don't get me wrong as with most Bluetooth controllers there is a slight bit of lag but it shouldn't really hinder the experience all that much however it will really need you to learn the game again as playing with a controller as you can see here feels and reacts completely differently to using the on-screen controls. Something like drifting around a corner in Asphalt 8 used to be done by just turning and tilting the device using the accelerometer however we're now using the analog stick and it's a completely different experience but it would be a lot better to do this on something with a larger screen like a Nexus 9 or a Samsung tablet so definitely keep that in mind also keep in mind that some games will react differently. Now I've used Modern Combat 5 with a Bluetooth controller in the past and not had any issues at all and that was a controller made by Mad Cats. However using the DualShock controller here you can see there's a ton of lag and the actual buttons themselves are really strange. The only buttons that I can figure out is using R2 actually switches my weapon out and for some reason the shoot button is the option button which doesn't really make that much sense as you can see here. Now it still controls as you expect, you can move around and look around but with a game like this where you need that precision, you want to have not much lag. And unfortunately with the PlayStation 4 controller, you do get a lot of lag with this game. So it is a bit of trial and error depending on what kind of game you're going to be playing. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video, but I just wanted to let you know that Copper vs Glass Gaming is now available on YouTube and the channel is live. Now this is a secondary channel all about gaming with gameplay, game reviews and just game related videos that I wanted to keep a bit separate from the tech related stuff here on Copper vs Glass and it's linked in the description down below if you want to subscribe and join in. Now also if you want to add me on the PlayStation Network as that is my chosen console of choice then you can do and my gamer tag is cab from 1989 so again if you guys want to join in with some gaming news and just in general some really awesome gaming stuff that's coming up really shortly then again subscribe down below using the link. Anyway back to the video. Now what about using the remote play feature on any Android device? Well I'm going to have a link in the description down below so you guys can download the remote play application yourself. Now you can't click on the register the controller button because it doesn't register it properly and we've already got Bluetooth set up so that's not necessarily a problem. You then need to click on next and it's then going to locate your PlayStation 4. If it doesn't you need to go into the settings and the remote play features on the PlayStation 4 itself and just enter a code that pops up on screen. As you can see then you've got a fully fledged PlayStation 4 on your Android device. Now as you can see here it looks a lot like those emulators that you can download to play Game Boy games and things like that but this is a complete PlayStation 4 in the palm of your hands. Now you will need to be on the same Wi-Fi network as the PlayStation 4 itself so you can't necessarily use this out and about however that may come later in the future but just to have accessibility to your PlayStation 4 in terms of movies and things like that when you're not actually in the lounge for instance is a really awesome experience and it runs quite well. Now at the start of the video I was playing a bit of Drive Club which is a perfect game for this sort of setup as it doesn't really require too many inputs, too many controls and things and you don't really need to worry about lag all that much because you can kind of get over that and just kind of steer around it. 
Now with something like Fallout 4, as you can see here, something like lag definitely plays a problem. As you can see, moving the controller, it moves a split second after. Now it doesn't necessarily look too bad on video, however when you are actually playing the game and you're trying to shoot enemies, move around and do specific quests, it can definitely be a bit of a problem. But one thing that does look awesome is the graphics. Now as you can see here, I'm looking at it on my 1080p screen on my OnePlus 2, and yes it may be a bit small, but in terms of the actual display itself, it looks really nice. The colours are really good, the frame rate sticks really well, and just in general it's a really enjoyable experience if you can get past the lag on the controller, and that's kind of my main hindrance with using the remote play setup. They really need to sort out the lag or a different input method for the controller to make it work just that little bit better, as trying to play a game like this or a more intense game like Battlefield or Call of Duty Online, you're not going to have any chance at all because of the lag and the latency on the controller. And before you say it's the Wi-Fi causing the lag, it's definitely not because as you can see here, if I use the on-screen controls, moving around, pressing buttons and shooting works extremely well and there's not any lag whatsoever. So it's definitely the Bluetooth in the controller that's not up to par, which is definitely a shame, but if you want to play with on-screen controls and you want to put yourself through that, then you can do. If you're used to playing games on a mobile device, then using the on-screen controls won't necessarily be that big a problem, however you would have to adapt to certain things. And that is pretty much going to do it guys. Now the remote play feature from the PlayStation 4 to an Android device is quite good. However the controller latency definitely hinders the experience quite a lot in my opinion. And it's not the best experience. And for me I'm only a couple of feet away from my TV so I'm going to be playing it on there. Now if you want to use this as a Bluetooth controller for your Android device for Android specific games from the Play Store. Then that's definitely a viable option as it doesn't really have that much lag. It works with a lot of games. And if you tinker around with the actual controls themselves you're going to have a pretty good gaming experience now i would recommend getting a slightly bigger device than a mobile phone but if you've got a phone around and you've got your dualshock 4 controller then it's a great way to use your playstation in a different room without really having to worry about it now the remote play feature is also available on pc and it will be coming very soon to mac so it will be an updated video coming out shortly once that is available probably within the next couple of months is what the rumors are saying in terms of when playstation are going to make that available so that would be a really awesome experience to be able to play it on my laptop when I'm in bed or in the office for instance and just in general have a PlayStation experience somewhere else. Now if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to leave a comment down below and if you guys have got any questions about the remote play features on the PlayStation 4 then again put them in the comments section or on Twitter at Copper vs Glass. For more great content don't forget to subscribe. I'm Michael from Copper vs Glass. Thanks very much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video.